Hare Krishna Pakit Dhanu 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 Pakit ज्ञानंजना शलाकया चक्षुरन मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाती स्वापदाक वंदेह श्री गुरु श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश साग्रजाता सह गणा रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत परीजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्णपादगणलिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यादेशिणे पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तूपस्वक भक्तावतारम भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्लिक जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैता गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगायते गिरी यत्पातमह वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमाधव श्री चैतन्यश्वर जयत सुरत पंगोर्मंदमते गति मत्सर्वस्वा पदा भोज राधा मदन मोहन दिव्या वृंदारण्यकमाद श्रीमद्रत्नागर सिंहासनस्त श्रीमद्राधा शिल गोविंद देव प्रेष्ठालिभि सेव्यम स्मरा श्रीमनरासारंबी वंशी वटाटस्थित कर्षण वेणु स्वनेगोपी गोपीनाथ श्रीस्थुना ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंट कैंटो टू चैप्टर ए I believe this is the second last chapter of this canto. The name of the chapter is "Further Questions" by Maharaj Pradikshit. <clears throat> the previous questions asked in chapter five 
was um, about the universe, about the creation, um, about the universal form and all those things. Sukadev so, Goswami answered those questions by citing the version of an interaction between um, um, Brahma and Narad Muni. And that's how Sukadev Goswami answered those questions to, um, to Maharaj Parikshit. And after Brahma describes the structure of the universe and the importance of Bhagavatam and how Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, after describing those uh, answers, then um, Brahma ji gave this instruction to Narad Muni that Narada, now I have told you the Srimad Bhagavatam as I have heard from the Lord. Now you um, go and spread this message of Srimad Bhagavatam to all living entities in such a way that their bhakti may increase. Describe Srimad Bhagavatam in such a way that their bhakti may increase. Um, and then um, Brahma ji stops speaking and the last chapter ends. Then this chapter begins with the inquisitiveness of Maharaj Parikshet, who is asking Sukadeva Goswami. He is telling how did Narad Muni spread the message? To whom did he spread the message? Um, how did he describe the Lord? And based on this, we see um, Dhruv Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, uh, Ambarish Maharaj, um, they are all um, disciples of Narad Muni, Maharaj Chitra Ketu, and then Bratra Sura. So they are all disciples of Narad Muni. And the question, the seed of all those pastimes is in this chapter. Uh, Parikshit Maharaj asks, uh, whom all did Narad Muni describe Srimad Bhagavatam? Um, what did he dis what did he say? How did he describe? And then um, Sukadeva Goswami says, um, Parikshit Maharaj says, this whole um, chapter is mainly spoken by Maharaj Parikshit. That's why this chapter is called the questions by Maharaj Parikshit. Then Maharaj Parikshit pours out, out his heart and he says, I really want to I really want to hear all the narrations of the Lord. I really want to hear everything about the Lord, every every way Narad Muni describes about the Lord. Just continue glorifying the Lord. And then um, the all these discussions centered around the Lord are full of potencies. Like you now we may hear various subject matter, but then the moment we hear about the glories of the Lord, then we feel a special divine potency in those messages. Uh, and Maharaj Parikshit is feeling that, especially when those messages are spoken by a Paramahamsa Vaishnava, uh, Sukhadev Goswami. So he doesn't want Sukhadev Goswami to stop. So he is telling um, these narrations that you are describing about the Lord are full of divine potencies. So I just want to keep keep hearing continuously. Um, and these narrations that you are describing, they are auspicious for all living entities. So right now, Parikshit Maharaj and all the sages uh, um, on the bank of Ganges in, in Sukratal, they are all benefited. But Parikshit Maharaj can understand that these messages will be whatever Sukadev Goswami, however he is describing the Lord, these messages will later on be written. And that's how they will be auspicious for all living entities. And that's how we are getting benefited is by repeating or um, by rehearing the conversation that happened 5,000 years back between uh, Sukhadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit. Now we are rehearing those subject matters. <clears throat> Maharaj Parikshit keeps on, keeps going and he says, uh, when you are narrating about the Lord, that really helps me to fix my mind on the Lord. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Man mana bhavna bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru. That always think of me, always remember me. But then we are not able to always remember Krishna because we are caught up in so many things and so many engagements and so many duties. Um, and we may not be so pure that while doing all those things, we can remember the Lord. Um, but especially it is an opportunity, especially while hearing Srimad Bhagavatam or the discussion that are centered around the Lord or the pure devotees um, to uh, fix our mind on them. Um, and if Sukhadev Goswami stops speaking, then Maharaj Parikshit mind may get uh, distracted. That is the fear of Maharaj Parikshit. So that's why the moment his previous questions were answered and Sukhadev Goswami stopped speaking, Maharaj Parikshit immediately picked up 
and uh, we will see today he asked like 20 questions or more uh, keeps on keep on like asking question 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 because he is so eager that he doesn't want this is eagerness of Maharaj Parikshit um, this hearing from Sukadev Goswami is helping Maharaj Parikshit to remember the Lord um, and we also hear that Maharaj Parikshit attained perfection just by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and here we see how eager he was to hear Srimad Bhagavatam So he says that, uh, please continue speaking Srimad Bhagavatam because this helped me to fix my mind on the Lord. Is my voice clear or is there some disturbance? Clear, Prabhupada. <clears throat> then Manak Parikshit says, um, um, I feel like um, by hearing, Manak Parikshit says, by hearing, the message centered around Krishna, um, one becomes free from all material desires. And this is my desire that before I leave this body, I want to be free from all material desire and I want to fix my mind on the Lord. And therefore, I just want to continuously hear because by hearing, my heart is becoming purified. It is all auspicious. And by hearing from you, my mind is fixed on Krishna. Therefore, please continue speaking. And then Maharaj Pariksit says that anybody who hears the Srimad Bhagavatam regularly and very seriously, um, um, Supreme Lord will manifest in their heart within a very short period of time. And that is the experience of Maharaj Pariksit. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is getting fixed in his heart by hearing from Sukhadeva Goswami. And that's why Maharaj Parikshit is saying that anybody who hears regularly the Srimad Bhagavatam will have Krishna fixed in their mind um, in a very short duration of time, short period of time. And actually, um, this is the realization of Maharaj Parikshit and same is the realization of, of Sutta Goswami. This conversation that we are hearing is actually a conversation between Sutta Goswami and series of Nameshwaranya added by Sonak Rishi. Um, and the second chapter is spoken by Sutta Goswami and Sonakrishi. That's a conversation. And same verses they speak there also, um, which is the um, invocation prayer of Srimad Bhagavatam. Nashtra Prayashobadeshu, Nityam Bhagavati Sevaya. Nityam Bhagavati Sevaya. Always serve uh, regularly uh, uh, by regularly hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. All the impurities are almost destroyed within one's heart. And same thing Maharaj Parikshit is sharing here. So this is the experience Sutta Goswami by and Sutta Goswami was also sitting in this assembly between Sukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit. Sutta Goswami was sitting there and he heard and he also experienced and Maharaj Parikshit was also saying. So we also see that the same message that is spoken in first canto, second chapter is now same message about the glories of hearing is coming in the second canto, eighth chapter. And we see one is the experience Sutta Goswami. One is the experience of Maharaj Parikshit. Experience is the same. And the glories of this is, yeah. Uh, Parikshit Maharaj keeps, keeps going on and he says, when the sound incarnation of Lord Krishna enter the heart of uh, a devotee. Um, and what is this sound incarnation of Krishna? Sound incarnation of Krishna is Srimad Bhagavatam. And sound incarnation of Krishna is the holy name. Name is non-different from Krishna. And Bhagavatam is literary form of Krishna. Non-different from Krishna. So Parikshit Maharaj says that when the sound incarnation of Krishna, which is the name or the qualities or the pastimes or this Bhagavatam, when the sound incarnation enters the heart, it washes away all the contaminations um, uh, of lust, anger and hankering. Um, in this material world, naturally people have a lot of hankering. And uh, because people have so many hankerings, people have difficulty even to sleep in the night. Because even when they are sleeping, they are thinking about what will happen there, what will happen there, how do I get this, and they are disturbed. But this uh, message of the Lord is all purifying. So anybody who hears, give an oral reception to the sound incarnation of Krishna, they will become free from all the contaminations of um, hankering, um, lust, anger, and envy. The example given is uh, the, you know, after the uh, rainfall season, there is after the monsoon, there is muddy water all over. 
if you see especially in india you can see all the roads are full of muddy waters uh, after the rainfall and then when the autumn rain comes then it uh, purifies the water and all the water becomes pure so um, and this muddy water is compared to lust anger and hankering and envy and this autumn water is compared to the message the, the sound incarnation of lord krishna and that purifies all the mud in the heart and this sound incarnation awakens a loving relationship uh, shri Prabhupada keeps on describing in the purport that we all have a loving relationship with krishna either as a friend or um, as a servant or as a parent or as a conjugal lover we all have a loving relationship with krishna and as these contaminations wash away by the process of bhakti, um, <clears throat> as the heart becomes pure, um, this loving relationship that we have with Krishna is awakened. And such a devotee uh, in whom, uh, uh, whose heart has become purified by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam and the Holy Name, such a devotee, he never goes away from the lotus feet of Krishna. This is one of the signs of a devotee who has become purified. Is His mind will be very much focused on the lotus feet of Krishna. Everything about Krishna is transcendental. Krishna name is transcendental. Krishna form is transcendental. Shiva Bhagavatam is transcendental. But as long as there are contaminations within our heart, because Krishna's lotus feet are transcendental, we cannot meditate on the lotus feet of Krishna um, as long as there are contaminations in the heart. And uh, uh, the process that Parishit Maharaj is speaking here is, he says, you hear about Bhagavata, the sound incarnation. You hear about the, you hear the holy name. Prabhupada says, most important aspect of chanting is hearing. You hear this name and this Bhagavata, um, and your heart will become purified gradually. And as your heart becomes purified, um, uh, hankering, lust, anger, and envy will go away. Uh, relationship that you have with Krishna will be awakened within your heart. Um, and the lotus feet of Krishna will become fixed in your heart. Krishna will quickly manifest in your heart. These are all the experience of Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit already, Maharaj Parikshit already a pure devotee. Um, before even curse, he was a pure devotee. Um, and uh, especially when he is hearing from Sukadev Goswami, these symptoms are manifesting in his heart while hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. A pure heart, completely peaceful. Krishna is manifested. Lotus feet is, uh, he is able to constantly remember the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. His relationship with Krishna is getting awakened and uh, death is approaching. And he has a fear of being distracted from the deep state of consciousness he is in. Maharaj Parikshit also says that I am not, because I am hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from a lotus mouth, I am not affected by thirst or hunger. He is not feeling any thirst or hunger or um, any demands or any hankering. Thirst and hunger is also a hankering. He is so absorbed um, and newer and newer rasas are getting revealed as um, Sukadev Goswami is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. So Maharaj Parikshit doesn't want it to stop. And for a moment, uh, uh, Sukadev Goswami stops speaking. Parikshit Maharaj is glorifying um, the importance of hearing and the effect. This is also very nice that, uh, like, he's, and you know, sometimes we should encourage, uh, uh, like, um, encourage to encourage those that we are hearing from. Sometimes, you know, hear. Um, so it like he's Parikshit Maharaj is like Sukadev Goswami is speaking, Sukadev Goswami stops speaking, and Parikshit Maharaj is encouraging Sukadev Goswami, although Sukadev Goswami doesn't need any encouragement. Sukadev Goswami is uh, uh, totally absorbed, and his joy comes in uh, speaking or uh, discussing the topics of uh, Krishna, topics of Vishnu, topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. He doesn't need any encouragement, but Parikshit Maharaj is. Uh, um, like, you know, it is said that when we glorify devotees, I mean, we should not glorify common people, but we should glorify devotees. When we glorify devotees, we should not glorify blank, blank, blank glorification. Blank glorification is very nice, very nice devotee. Uh, 
uh, you are very nice person or you are very nice everything was very nice but there should be some specific details um, um, that encourages and makes them feel like okay my service is getting accepted there is some there is some service i could render and they feel grateful um, and the devotees feel grateful um, that oh krishna engaged me in, in in some service so parikshit maharaj is quantifying um, um, the benefit of the benefit that he is experiencing um, by listening to Srimad Bhagavatam of Sukadev Goswami. He is telling Krishna is manifested in my heart. Heart is becoming pure. It is all auspicious. No hankering of thirst and hunger is, um, um, is affecting me. My mind is completely absorbed in the lotus feet of Krishna. But because Parikshit Maharaj is a humble devotee, he is not telling this is what is happening with me. He is telling anybody who hears Shriman Bhagavatam, Krishna will manifest, heart will become purified. That is also another feature of devotee. A devotee gives the message, but a devotee never gives the message. He gives the message based on his realization, but he does not bring himself into the center. Like in English, there is a saying, we should not blow our own trumpets. So here, Parishit Maharaj is not using first tense, like, you know, this is what is happening to me. But he is telling, see, this is how glorious is when Srimad Bhagavatam is getting spoken from your mouth. <clears throat> and the example Parishit Maharaj gives at the end of and this 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 section, first eight verses, glorifies uh, the importance of hearing uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. If you want to... Um, discuss on the glories of hearing, then you can refer to second canto, eight chapter, first eight verses. Then Parikshit Maharaj says, uh, just like a traveler who had a bad journey and after a troubled journey, long troubled journey, when he returned home, he feels very much like um, a satisfied, pacified, like at home feeling. And likewise, when a living entity who is troubled by the material energy and material desires and hankerings in this material world, when the troubled living entity influenced by the material nature, when he comes and sits in front of Sukadeva Goswami and hears Shiman Bhagavatam, then he feels like home. All the hankerings are gone. The troubled journey of a traveler is compared to the existence in this material world. And being at home refers to his natural position of being a servant of Krishna, of hearing the glories of Krishna, of hearing the name of Krishna, of taking the association of devotees of Krishna. This is like a home state. Um, 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 so, very nice section of glories. And then we come to um, uh, the questions. Um, and then Parikshit Maharaj, after I mean, what he wants, it is just the first day actually. Second canto is over. Twelve cantos to go. Seven days uh, for Maharaj. Six more days for Maharaj Parikshit to leave this, this world. And first day experience is amazing for Maharaj Parikshit. Hearing from Sukadev Goswami. Um, so now he wants his desire. Desire of Maharaj Parikshit. Keep on going the way you are describing the glories of the Lord keep going keep on keep going keep on describing till i die so that i die with my mind fixed in the first chapter we discussed we discussed um in the sorry in the second in the second chapter second kind of first chapter so Goswami describes the goal of life the goal and what we want to do at the end of life is ante narayana smriti is remember Narayan or remember Krishna at the time of death. And when this is the beginning of um, um, and the talk of Sukhadeva Goswami. And since then, Maharaj Parikshit is remembering the lotus feet of Krishna in his mind. And he is very successful to be able to do so um, while listening to the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. His mind is fixed. So he doesn't want this to stop. And if you if you see this chapter, the kind of questions Maharaj Parikshit asks, different 
some are answering 11th canto some answer in 7th canto some answer in the next chapter some answer in third canto so many questions are answered throughout shriman bhagavatam so here are the questions by maharaj parikshit he says <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, jiva is spiritual it is satchitananda and the body is material so how can a spiritual element um, get attached to a material body or how does a jiva a completely spiritual entity attain a material body and how do they work and coexist together how that works then he says uh, the Lord krishna has a body the living entity has a body what is the difference between krishna's body and our body and the body of a jiva <clears throat> um Brahma came from the navel of Lord Vishnu. So what is the difference between the body of Brahma and the body of Lord? Just like you know, when a mother gives birth to a child, the child, uh, um, um, the body of the child looks like the mother in a way because same DNA and however we say a human uh, mother will have a human child, a dog mother will have a dog child. A cat mother will have a cat child, a lion mother will have a lion child, a bird mother will have a bird child. So naturally, the body of the child is similar to the body of the parent. And uh, Brahma directly appeared. Now, if we, another way we see, uh, when the child comes out, the child is connected to the mother through the navel. That's how the child gets his feet, through the navel. The, both the navels are connected. Um, <clears throat> And same, Brahma, Brahma is connected to the navel of uh, Lord Vishnu, uh, like the child and a mother. So uh, Brahma is asking, what is the difference between their body? And how is it that the Lord is completely spiritual and Brahma is uh, Brahma's body is not spiritual? Material body of Brahma and spiritual body of Narayan. How can you explain that? Um, then he says, you explain that... Um, um, Karno Dakshai Vishnu lies in the Karno Dakoshan and from him comes millions of universes. So where exactly he is and where does he lie and how does he lie? Um, um, then uh, Sukadeva Goswami in the past, Sukadeva Goswami when he was describing the universal form of Krishna, then Sukadeva Goswami says uh, um, the top of the head is like Satya Loka and there's like Janalok, Maharlok, Tapalok and then uh, the bottom, uh, the sole of the feet of universal form, like patal look, um, and uh, uh, the waist or navel region is like the bhu look, above, like above is bhuva look, and then uh, the chest of the Lord is swarg look, and then below is like atal, uh, sutal, talatal, and all the way to patal. So you said uh, um, the body of the Lord is divided into. Um, these planetary systems. So I've heard, and then um, um, at the limb, there is uh, the demigods residing, um, Brahmana residing in the head, um, and there are all living entities are residing. So you have described the planets and the governors, the controllers, as the limbs um, of the universal form. Can you explain more? How is it that these planets are the head and this planet? And how can I imagine a personality with the planets as the head and legs and, and navel and others? How can I understand that? So can you describe that in more detail? Um, and then he asked many questions about the time. He says, uh, um, can you explain the kalpa and vikalpa? So kalpa is that duration of time between the creation of the universe and the annihilation of the universe. When the creation takes place, when the universe is created and when the universe is destroyed. So that um, uh, time is called a kalpa. And vikalpa is the subdivision of kalpa, various in between. Um, then Sukhade Goswami says, how is time perceived in different planetary system? And we see that, I mean, we hear that um, Brahma, um, uh, like Revati, Revati father, he went to Brahma. Um, to ask for a, a relevant uh, groom uh, for uh, uh, his daughter Devati. King Devata went there and when he came back, Yugas passed away and there was Balaramji and um, Devata got Devati married to Lord Balaram. 
um, so the time is different in Brahma Lok, in the heavenly planet, in earth, and in lower planets. Um, um, maybe millions of uh, years of suffering um, in the hellish planet is like a moment in the earth planet. That's what Prabhupada says. Uh, we get a human body instantaneously or we get another body instantaneously. Although we get an experience of millions of years in the lower planets because the time is very, very fast there. So, can you describe, Parishit Mahara says, can you describe how the time is perceived in different planetary systems? Um, can you describe the life of humans, uh, how long the human lives, the demigods live in the hellish planet? Can you describe their lifespans? Um, can you describe uh, what is the dimension of the universe? How long and how broad and how wide and etc. Et um, um, can you describe the characteristics and the activities of devotees? how devotees live, how they how they act. This section is very similar to um, uh, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, where Arjuna asks uh, uh, how a devotee walks, how does a devotee talks, how does he conduct himself. So, characteristic and activities of devotees. Then, uh, Parishnara says, can you describe the, the Varnashram Dharma? Four Varnas are Brahmana, Chatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Four Ashramas are Brahmachari, Grihastha, Mana, Prasanyas. And there are different duties uh, prescribed for different Varnas and different Ashramas. So can you describe all those characteristics of all the four Varnas, all the four Ashramas? Then can you describe about different Yugas? Kali Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Trita Yuga, Sati Yuga. Can you describe different Yugas? How long are these Yugas? What is the Yuga Dharma for each Yuga? Like we know Kalota Dhari Kirtanath. In Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is Hari Kirtan. So what is the Yuga Dharma for Sati Yuga, for Dwapur Yuga, for Trita Yuga? And can you describe what all incarnations appear in Sati Yuga, appear in Trita Yuga, appear in Dwapur Yuga, appear in Kali Yuga? And what are the activities of all these incarnations? Yuga Avatars. Like we know the Yuga Avatar for Kali Yuga is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is answered in the 11th canto. Uh, fifth chapter. <clears throat> so, can you describe all those? Then, can you describe the um, um, the destination of devotees? Where do they end up in going? Um, how do devotees destroy the subtle body? You know, subtle body is mind, intelligence, false ego that is there as long as we remain in this material existence. Only the gross body can the subtle body keeps on reincarnating. So, how the devotees destroy the subtle body? What happens to the subtle body of devotees? Because they become self-realized. And what are the mystical powers or the opulences of devotees? <clears throat> Can you describe the conclusion of all the Vedas or the Upavedas or the Itihasas of the Puranas? Because Sukadeva Goswami is aware of all the scriptures. So describe the conclusion. This we also see um, Sutta Goswami and no, the sages of Naimesharanya in the first canto, first chapter. They describe what is the essence of all the scriptures, what is good for all living entity. Same thing here, Maharaj Parikshit asks Sukadev Goswami. Describe the conclusion of all the Vedas, Upavedas, Itihasas, Puranas. Can you describe how the living entity can be delivered from samsar? Samsar is the cycle of birth and death. How the living entity can be delivered from the cycle of birth and death. Can you describe what are the favorable activities of bhakti and what are not favorable for bhakti? Um, and um, also, can you describe what happens to the living entities when the universe is destroyed? Where do they go? When there is partial annihilation at the end of Brahma's day, where do they go? How did they how did they reappear uh, uh, after pralay uh, from the body of the Lord? Um, yeah. And uh, describe how the Lord performs his pastimes. This uh, last question is always the same for any question asked Shivan Bhagavatam. Please describe what the glories of the Lord. In, in different incarnations, his leelas. Um, so in this way, um, and if you see this, these are very wide varieties of questions. Uh, more than 20 questions, Parishit Maharaj asks. And because first he glorifies the importance of hearing, and then he says, indirectly he says, what is the benefit? The Lord is established within the heart. Heart becomes purified, all auspicious. It's like troubled traveler returning back home, feel feels at home, no more hankering of uh, thirst and hunger. Um, everything is everything is set. Life is like 
and refocused on the original purpose. And then when he stopped speaking, then he asked so many questions. And what is the response of Sukadev Goswami? So then uh, Parikshit Maharaj says, please answer all these questions that I've inquired. Um, and the questions that I have not inquired from you. So Parikshit Maharaj, Maharaj, his eagerness to hear is so much and is so continuous, so continuous and so deep that he says, please answer all the questions I have asked and all the questions I may not have asked. Means indirectly, he's telling Sukadev Goswami, keep on, keep on speaking. Whatever you know, you speak. Whatever I ask, you speak. Whatever I haven't asked, you speak. But keep on glorifying. Um, and then he says, because I am a soul surrendered to you. That also shows that just like you know, Krishna first surrendered to Arjuna first surrendered to Krishna and Krishna spoke. So likewise here, uh, Parikshin Maharaj says, I surrender to you, Sukadev Goswami. Please tell me everything. And Prabhupada says, it is a, it is a relationship between the spiritual master and uh, the disciple. The spiritual master is meant to enlighten the disciple in transcendent knowledge. Um, um, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Tat Vidhi Prani Patena, Pari Prasne Na Sevaya. Um, uh, and su submissively inquire because they can impart you the knowledge because they have seen the truth. So keep on, keep on speaking what I have asked and what I have not asked. Then he says, among all the sages, you are the authority because your knowledge is coming in Parampara. This is very nice also because there are so many gurus, YouTube gurus. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not talking about ISKCON devotees who are greatly realized souls, but there are so many other gurus who are not in a bona fide sampradaya. So he is telling Sukadev Goswami that uh, um, you are the authority among all the sages because your knowledge is coming in parampara. So Prabhupada says that we should not hear from those. Sometimes we hear... Um, sometimes we have, we want to hear in our mother tongue, which is very nice. But then I recommend them that hear within Iskand, um, because the message will be same across in any language, and the books are the basis, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. Um, uh, and hear from anybody, but hear from a uh, follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, follower of Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> then that knowledge, then that knowledge is authorized. Books are the basis, and um, they should be coming in parampara and we see um, Sukadev Goswami is coming in parampara what is the parampara of Sukadev Goswami he directly heard it from Vyasadeva Vyasadeva directly heard it from Narad Muni Narad Muni directly heard it from Brahma and Brahma directly heard it from Narayan um, so you are coming in parampara so your knowledge is perfect and you are. that's why you are the best among all the sages I am drinking the nectar of Krishna, which is flowing from your mouth. Therefore, please don't stop and continue Krishna Katha. And when Sukadev Goswami heard, Sukadev Goswami was very pleased with Maharaj Parikshit. Then, <clears throat> then Sukadev Goswami, again, now the next uh, uh, chapter is a twist again. So now Sukadev Goswami spoke Srimad Bhagavatam, which was first spoken by Lord to Brahma in the first Kalpa. This is very, very interesting. So Sukadev Goswami is not like, yes, I know Shivan Bhagavatam and I will say. But Sukadev Goswami comes in Parampara. And because Sukadev Goswami comes in Parampara, Sukadev Goswami only repeats what is in Parampara. Shri Prabhupada also was only repeating uh, what he has heard from our Guru Parampara. Prabhupada said, haven't added or deleted anything. I am presenting as it is. And we see that example in Sukadev Goswami. Next chapter is Lord speaking Shivan Bhagavatam to Brahma. The original Bhagavatam spoken by the Lord to Brahma is the next chapter. And next chapter also contains the uh, Chatur Shloki uh, Bhagavatam. The four seed verses spoken by or entire Bhagavatam in four verses. Um, the original Bhagavatam in the seed form spoken by Narayan to Brahma. And then how Brahma explained. It's very technical actually. And then how Brahma explained it to his Narada. That version, original. So, um, um, this is also very nice that uh, um, so, uh, Parikshit Maharaj is asking question and uh, Sukadev Goswami is answering through Narayan to Brahma and through various other authorities. 
he then later on sukadev goswami summarizes but sukadev goswami is only speaking in parampara and prabhupada says that's how the knowledge is preserved <clears throat> he is always speaking through parampara like we may say this is what like for example right now we are discussing this what bhagavatam says so this we are we are re repeating the interaction between sukadev goswami and parikshit maharaj when we go to next chapter we re repeat the instruction given by the lord to brahma so the knowledge is very pure and because this is the original knowledge coming down in guru parampara then sukadev goswami um, um, prepared himself um, to describe um, <clears throat> all the answers that parikshit maharaj has inquired and that's the end of this chapter okay so are there any discussion at this point of time if there are questions we can take questions if there are no questions then we can read one verse based on how the discussion goes hari krishna prabhu bandha pranam please let me i have a question but uh, you can uh, read verse but do not the last question that's okay it so won't take much you time. you can yeah you you will be reading one verse but right? so you can read that right? later i can ask. okay so we will read one verse from bhagavatam and this is from this chapter verse number 5 all right प्रविष्टा कर्णरंध्रेण स्वान भावासोरूपम धुनोती समल कृष्ण सलील से यथा शरत प्रविष्टा दस बींग एंटर्ड कर्णरंध्रेण कर्ण मीन्स इयर्स एंटर्ड थ्रू द होल्स ऑफ द इयर्स स्वान अकॉर्डिंग टू वन्स लिबरेटेड पोजिशन भावा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन रिलेशनशिप सदा ruham the lotus flower dunoti cleanses samalam material qualities like lust anger avarice and hankering krishnaha lord krishna the supreme personality of godhead salilasya of the reservoir of waters yatha as it were sharat the autumn season translation by god by his divine grace kesi bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupada shila prabhupada ki jai the sound incarnation of lord krishna the supreme soul shrimad bhagavatam and uh, the sound incarnation of lord krishna enters into the heart of a self realized devotee sits on the lotus flower of his loving relationship and thus cleanses the dust of material association such as lust anger and hankering thus it acts like an autumnal autumnal rains upon pools of muddy water it is said that a single pure devotee of the lord can deliver all the fallen souls of the world i mean shila prabhupada is a great example a single pure devotee of the lord can deliver all the fallen souls of the world thus one who is actually in the confidence of pure devotee like narada and sukadev goswami and thus is empowered by one spiritual master as narada was by brahma ji can not only deliver himself from the clutches of maya or illusion but can deliver the whole world by his pure and empowered devotional strength and it is said how can one become pure devotee one becomes pure devotee devotee when one is empowered by one spiritual master like shila prabhupad was empowered by saraswati thakur like narad muni was empowered by brahma like brahma was empowered by um was empowered by narayan krishna himself the comparison to autumnal rains that falls on muddy reservoirs of water is very appropriate during the rainy season all the waters of the rivers become muddy the monsoon but in the month of july august the autumn season when there is slight rainfall the muddy waters of the rivers all over the world become at once clear by addition of some chemical a small reservoir of water like that of a metropolitan water works tank can be cleared <clears throat> but by such a tiny effort it is not possible to clear up the reservoir of water like the rivers a powerful pure devotee of the lord however can deliver not only his personal self but also many others in his association so what happens you know like in all this uh, uh, cities in america we have big water tanks and the, and that's where the water is supplied to the whole city um 
so that water can become uh, contaminated over a period of time. It can get fungi and many other things um, because the water stays there stagnant for a very long time. So what they do is they put some chemicals and they treat so no contamination can come into the water. So Prabhupada says like a water tank, you can put a little bit chemical and you can treat the water and purify the water in the water tanks, reservoir water tanks. But that is not possible in a river. You cannot put a little bit of chemical in a mirror, in a river or an ocean and say throughout the river, no fungi, no contamination, no mud. This is not possible. But a powerful devotee um, can purify himself and can purify um, can purify anybody who comes in contact with this association. Now, reservoir of water is also taken from a river water or an ocean water or a flowing water. But that small uh, water tank can be purified, but not the whole reservoir. Likewise, a devotee not only purifies himself like a, like a, like a water tank, but he purifies everything that comes in contact with him. In other words, the cleansing of the polluted heart by other methods like the culture of empiric knowledge, which is Gyan Yoga or the mystic Jinmasmik or Ashtanga Yoga can simply cleanse one's own heart. But devotional service to the Lord is so powerful that it can cleanse the heart of the people in general um, by the devotional service of the pure empowered devotee. This is very nice. Krishna says in Srimad Bhagavatam 11th Canto to Uddhava. Krishna says uh, there are three paths by which a living entity can make spiritual progress. One is a path of Jnana Yoga, path of uh, Karma Yoga, path of Bhakti Yoga. Um, Karma Yoga is for those who are very attached. Jnana Yoga is for those who are very much frustrated from this world. And Bhakti Yoga is for those people who are balanced or Ashtanga Yoga. So here Prabhupada is telling, yes, these paths are bona fide also. This path of Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga and Ashtanga Yoga, they can cleanse us. Um, um, but they can cleanse only us. Um, but the Bhakti Yoga, Prabhupada describes, yes, all these three paths can help one make spiritual progress. But how Bhakti Yoga is very, very special because the other yogas can only cleanse oneself, but Bhakti Yoga can deliver the entire world by the power of the empowered representative. A true representative of Lord like Narada Muni, Sukadeva Goswami, Lord Chaitanya, six Goswamis, and later Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur can deliver all people by their empowered devotional service. And Srila Prabhupada never took credit. Srila Prabhupada never thought, see, this is what I have done. Prabhupada says, um, my Guru Maharaj is working through me. And when Prabhupada is writing, um, one empowered devotee can deliver the whole world and Prabhupada is referring to his spiritual master and his spiritual master is delivering the whole world through the medium of Srila Prabhupada. That is the consciousness of Srila Prabhupada. By sincere efforts to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, one realizes his constitutional relationship with the Lord. Just by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we were discussing in our discussion also, when we all have our relationship, constitutional means it is it is our original relationship with the Lord. In transcendental humor of servitude, friendship, parental affection or conjugal love. And by such self-realization, one becomes situated at once in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. We have a relationship we have forgotten. And by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, that relationship can be reawakened, that loving relationship. And we can become situated in that loving relationship. Not only were all the pure devotees like Narada, self-realized souls, but they were engaged in preaching work automatically by spiritual impetus. So why they are preaching? They are not preaching because they just have to preach. But it was an impetus. By their own bhakti impetus, then they were engaged in preaching work. Not only they were self-realized by themselves. And thus they delivered many poor souls entangled in the material modes. They become so powerful because by sincerely, because they sincerely follow the Bhagavatam principle by regularly hearing and worshipping. So what gives a power to a devotee? A devotee becomes powerful when he sincerely follows the Bhagavatam principles of regularly hearing and worshipping. And that's why Shri Prabhupada says it requires patience. We cannot become empowered tomorrow. But if you are regularly hearing, and regularly chanting and regularly worshipping, then over a period of time, and the devotee becomes very powerful. And we see the example of our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, um, and um, they just, I mean, they just practiced what is Bhagavatam principles. And now they are like uh, completely pure-hearted. By such actions, the accumulated material lust 
become cleansed by the personal endeavor of the Lord within the heart. And the Lord cleanses. Um, um, the Lord is always within the heart of the living being, but he becomes manifested by one's devotional service. So somebody says, you know, Krishna become manifest. So is Krishna not there? Krishna is there in the heart of all living entities, but Krishna is not active. The living entity is covered by material desires and he is living his life as if there is no, like without any relationship with the Lord. But the Lord become manifest to those who practice the principles described in the Bhagavatam. Purification of the heart by culture of knowledge. This is very nice also. Purification of the heart by culture of knowledge, which is Jnana Yoga or Mystic Yoga, may be all right for the time be for the time being for an in individual person, but it is like the cleansing of a small quantity of stagnant water by chemical processes. Such clarification of such clarification of water may stand for the time being and the sen and the sediment settle down, but by a slight agitation, everything becomes muddy. The idea is that the devotional service of the Lord is the only method of cleansing the heart for good, whereas other methods may be superficially good for the time being. There is a risk, um, though other methods may be superficially good for the time being, there is a risk of becoming muddy again due to agitation of the mind. Um, devotional service to the Lord with, speci with specific attention for hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly and always is the best recommended method for liberation from the clutches of illusion. So Gyan Yogi Prabhupada describes as yes, their heart can are becoming cleansed but the mud is still there and it is settled down but the water is still very pure. But when, but there is a possibility by a slight agitation that the water can become muddy again because the mud was not removed, but it settled down. So likewise, there is a possibility for a Gyan Yogi that his mind can become contaminated again. And that's why Shri Prabhupada also says that um, even if one attains Brahman realization, after some point of time, he falls down again. Net of instruction, it is described because they have no understanding of the lotus feet of Krishna. Uh, so our bhakti or our advancement is compared to a creeper and a creeper cannot grow by itself. A creeper is always unstable. That's why our bhakti is compared to bhakti lata. Lata means a creeper. It's not compared to a vriksha, bhakti vriksha. It's bhakti lata. Um, because a creeper always needs support, cannot grow without support. And creeper is stable when the support is very strong. But if you, you know, you... Um, there is a big creeper and you put a small straw stick and you support the creeper then along with the uh, uh, creeper the stick also will fall down so we need a very stable support and that stable support is described by Lord Chaitanya as the lotus feet of Krishna and when the mind is fixed on lotus feet of Krishna then very stably we can grow Otherwise, any point of time, there can be a fault if our mind is not fixed on lotus feet of Krishna. But for jnanis, there is no such thing because they have no understanding of Krishna or lotus feet of Krishna. So at any point of time, they can again become agitated and they may fall. And there are many, many examples of Ashtanga Yogi like Vishwamitra Muni. A uh, few couple of times he fell from either Menaka or by the anger, he became angry or... Um, 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 so uh, there are cases where Bhakti Yogi or like uh, Sobri Muni, he was also uh, doing a lot of austerity, but slight agitation, he also uh, could not continue. But a Bhakti Yogi is a very stable, uh, once and for all pure purification. And once one go back to Godhead, Madgatva na nivartante dhama paramamama. One who returns to my abode never comes back again, Arjuna. So that's the verse. Now, Harshri Mataji, if you have a question, we can take and any other question we can take. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Uh, I just had one question that uh, when you said uh, that we should always remember Krishna, so what makes more sense means uh, what is more beneficial? Like we should always uh, try to memorize the uh, maha mantra like we try to recite mantra inside our mind or we should be able to uh, remember or uh, focus on any of the deity form or more it is more important is like uh, to uh, think about the past times or 
qualities uh, what what is more important well they are all one um, everything is within the name the qualities are in the name the form is in the name the name is the name itself so everything is one in a way um, um but it's not something that we try mata ji it's however krishna reveals to us propa says we should focus on hearing if the remembrance of lotus feet of krishna comes very nice mahaprabhu nityananda prabhu form comes very nice radha gopijana vallabha comes very nice some qualities of past times of the lord comes very nice but there is no necessary need to force our mind propa says no need to force our mind but let it reveal and uh, this advancement of naam roop guna leela is uh, uh, is a natural advancement is a natural progression it's not something that okay today i am going to get a guna realization and tomorrow i am going to get a leela realization is not something that we we can attain it it is something that is given to us and that's why it is said that the bhakti is a path of revelation but as we keep on going i mean everything is gradual proper says patience is very important everything is gradual but as we sincerely follow the four regulative principles remain here shrimad bhagavatam associate with devotees chant the holy name um and remain strict with our four regulative principles everything will naturally be awarded to us and and that's it hai na it's like see for example if you remember a particular quality of krishna or a particular past time of krishna and uh, if you're not able to remember it and if it goes away then that means uh, maybe i don't have that mercy at this point of time but uh, if you remember and you can be absorbed and uh, um, it stays there with you and the mind is not going here and there then we have the mercy of krishna at that point of time and some sometime in our chanting we may be able to access higher level of devotion we may not be at that stage of devotion permanently but we may we may be able to access a higher level of devotion that's a special mercy bhakti is not like this is only how it goes krishna can reveal and krishna can withdraw bhakti vinod thakur says sometime krishna removes the covering of maya and makes me see everything and sometime uh, krishna covers the the curtain of maya and then the whole whole vision is lost but when the vision is open it is very wonderful but when the vision is lost it is lost so uh, whatever mercy krishna access as a special mercy but when we actually attain that state of uh, naam roop guna leela then that will be our permanent continuous remembrance of that quality of the lord is it all right mata ji uh, yes thank you sir because i was just uh, like uh, i was just trying to figure out like shall we hear more chanting uh, in the sense that we should yeah. be like able to recite more within heart or we should hear more lectures so that may uh, lead, oh, like you will that may, yeah that sense i was trying to understand. the idea is uh, uh, whatever is your heart's calling sometime you feel like i want to hear more sometime you feel like i want to play some kirtan more not hearing at this point of time so in in whichever way you can be krishna conscious they are all one we see devotees attain perfection by kirtanam devotees attain perfection by shravanam by smaranam so they are all but of course shravanam kirtanam are most important where your heart calling is go for that thank you prabhu hari krishna thank you madam hari krishna okay any other question anything else okay if no other discussion then maybe we can end here vanchakalpa taru bhasha kripa sindhu bhaya eva cha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha ananta koti vaishnav rind ki jai shila prabhu pat ki jai thank you very much then we pranam sarikesh thank you so much prabhu ji hari krishna then we pranam thank you very much prabhu ji hari krishna thank you prabhu ji hari krishna
थैंक यू थैंक यू कृष्ण प्रभु हरे कृष्णा